Let's get this started. Let's get this show on the road. Oof. Woo. Again. Hey man, forgive me y'all. I'm just coming back from my workout, my morning workout. And you know, me, it's always, it's always the roughest getting started again. But uh, you know, today I definitely want to keep this going. You know, any, for all of you entrepreneurs out there, anything that you do um, has to be consistent. Um, even if you hate it, even if you're hungry, even if you're um, tired, even if you got a date, you got to get it done. I'm um, I'm dedicating a challenge of you know 30 days of podcast, 30 days of potting, 30 days of fitness, 30 days of everything. You need to do 30 days of everything. I'm just gonna go to because I want to. A couple of things. I want to be on stages talking. I want to be getting paid handsomely to go into stages and talk and speak my knowledge. I want to have a successful agency focused on Web3 and blockchain and freedom strategies mostly. I want to have a happy relationship with one woman, two women, three women, um, and have our kids. I want to have a community that supports me. I want to have the world that I want to live in, not the world that you're trying to tell me I have to have. So yeah, a lot of my thoughts may be unconventional, but remember this folks, you only have three jobs in life. Be happy, don't hurt anybody, and move the culture forward. And on that note, my name, is, and if you haven't met me before because this is new and I'm new at this, my name is Major Dream Williams. I am a NFT strategist. I am a futurist. I'm really just a freedom strategist that's here to get and lead my people from the block to the blockchain. So if you're down with that, if you're down with all of the knowings of Web3, NFTs, cryptocurrency, and what does that mean for you and your family in your ability to make and create generational wealth. Subscribe and, and, and click the notification bell because I'm going to be coming in strong on this and I want you to, to hear what I'm saying and, 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 really, and really dive into what, to what we're about here because, you know, I've, I've, I've seen more than most especially people, uh, you know, of my age. And uh, right now, this is probably one of the most important times in your life. It's either pay attention now or give up your family. Give up your family legacy. Give up the family farm. Be you and your family will have the fast track to loserdom. Because the thing is this, there is a war going on outside. No man or woman is safe from. You can run, but you can't hide. So since you, run, since you can't hide, you might as well prepare. You don't know when this war is gonna hit you. And I'm not talking about Putin. I'm talking about this spiritual war that's been going on, this spiritual warfare that has been going on. And you don't get to for that unless you have a backup plan, unless you have a framework, unless you have assets, unless you've been accumulating tools. Because if you don't have money or anything um, transactionable, fiat or so, you're going to need to have a skill that's at least employable. So I implore you to pay attention. Hmm. Okay.
Okay. So um, so yesterday, I uh, I chose to start a little series on this podcast. You know, as with the Art Mob, we use blockchain and that technology, the Web3 technology and the mindset to really just future-proof yourself. And, and since no one is really targeting the hood, targeting us, our, my community, then I'm going to have to do it because I hear so much information out there. And when I look at my people who are the biggest consumers of anything, none of them are in the space. Well, why is that? Well, mainly because they like to wear what they, what they buy. That's our only, that's the trauma loop. If I can't show you it, then it doesn't mean anything to me. That right there is so bad, such an archaic way of thinking. And even more so what I'm afraid of are all of the parrots that are out there who, who don't actually have that mindset and frame of work that can really um, you know, or, or authentically support the positions that they take in the blockchain. Or in, uh, or in crypto. Most people don't even have any crypto. So it's a, so it's a, it, it, it's imperative and it's very important for people like myself and others to step up and finally like put a voice out there. And look, there's no guarantee that anyone's going to hear my voice. There's no guarantee. However, there is an effect of my of my of my life has already affected the space. I'm already doing stuff in it, so it, it, you know it, I. But the guilt that probably will come up if I don't help by educating and giving my and, and, and allowing me allowing access to me because I think that's the biggest thing. I was talking to a friend the other day and uh very smart brother and he was he was you know talking to me and explaining to me that the world needs me that I need to be out here talking that I can't I can't you know operate from some uh imposter's mindset imposter syndrome mindset when I'm the one that is explaining and, and teaching and innovating and, and inspiring them. And they were like, nah, you're the one that need to be out there, man. We can't have these other clowns, all these Takashi 6 9 types. And, and yeah, that is very, very true. You know, there's been... um. The way that I think has definitely been an innovative place to um, to help guide people to then learn to innovate. But the problem is, is when you come and take the cliff notes or you come in and, and try to remix what I'm saying, it just doesn't sound right. And you realize, okay, yeah, and that's a sad thing. That's like hip hop. You know, once once these things become industries, you get what I'm saying? That's the problem, folks. That right there is the issue. People are coming into this as if it's just another thing. And that's what I want to protect against because it's not just another thing. This is the thing, not another thing. It is the thing. So we can't just go into this willy nilly or, you know, half ass like there's a fire. You're in a burning building. That's your current lifestyle. You need to get out of that building and take your ass into something that's better for you. That means learning the verbiage, learning the tools, learning the, the players in the game, learning its history, like having like a real respect, you know, like having a real respect for the place. And um, and that is what I see is the issue.
Yeah. It's really that that that's the biggest issue, man. Yeah, people 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 live in this microwave society. And they're trying to be microwave with this. Listen, Web3 moves way faster than any microwave. So take the time to educate yourself. So that way you can you you don't hurt yourself as well as hurt the industry. That's the thing, man. So I tell you, man, I hope that uh, at the art mob, at the mob, you definitely have to have a code of ethics. We don't play that. You know, we don't play that, man. This is this is real. We're dealing with people's lives. We're dealing with people's livelihoods. We're dealing with families. We're dealing with kids. I mean, there's people that have died over this shit already because of people like you out there who stay on the sideline and allow room for all of the bad players to come in. If you come in, then maybe you have the sensibility to stop a couple of those bad apples. Like the thing is, is that don't think that you have to be me to be valuable in this space. All you have to do is be you. That's it. All you have to do is be you. That's all, man. That's all. No more, no less. Authenticity wins every time. Every time. And, you know, I hope who's ever listening to this is, is working in corporate America and marketing and is trying to figure out how can I tap into the industry or how can I tap into the people? How can I get my, my ideal clients? Like, y'all still don't even get it fully. How to get the person that you want without using, you know, dastardly tactics. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so that's my little soapbox. Um, but yeah, hey guys, thank you. If this is your first time joining, or, um, or you are a, you know, you've seen my content on the various platforms sporadically as I've put them out there over the last you know, 10, 11, 12 years. Um, you know, I am someone that is always looking to improve myself and always looking for the next thing. So here I am with this for you. I started the Art Mob pod because I wanted to speak on how our intellectual property could carry value and create generational wealth. So the main thing that I talk about is NFTs, art, lifestyle, and just the every average everyday plight of the average person that's stuck on the block or stuck in that rut or stuck in corporate America who's trying to get out and get to the blockchain. So um, hopefully I can provide some value for you guys. And, um, and you know, you know so, um, so yesterday I was talking about my origin story. So that's what this week is gonna be like. You know, I get to talk about my origin story so that way you have a, a point and a place of reference to see like, who is this guy? Is he talking to me? Why would he be talking like that? He has no clue. Well, so yesterday I was telling you about, you know, just where I came up, just a little like time path on me growing. And today is, um, you know, what do I do? <laughs> well, you had to ask this question. Other than rant, <laughs> I do I advise for uh, multiple blockchain projects, but ultimately I run an agency. I am a marketer. I create um, funnels that allow you, the creator, to get your ideal client with whatever product or offer that you set up. Um, in a nutshell, simple. I happen to have vast amounts of knowledge in many areas, so it makes me a better marketer than you. Um, it, I have, I'm an insider, so it also kind of makes me a little bit better marketer than you. Come from hip hop, I'm authentic, entrepreneur, success in a couple of things, learning instances in a couple of things, and I don't do this for money. So that's probably another reason why I'm here in front of you. If I did it for money, I'd probably be doing somewhere else. So with that being said, I'm definitely throwing my cash app down 
Um, so that way, y'all out there could do all the awesome things that it, the Cash App does. So if you want to help this podcast move on, great. I love that because one, it ends up paying for my tickets for me to get to these events to speak. Because a lot of times I don't really want to be sponsored by anyone because I like to tell people, fuck off. When A lot of times when people feel they pay you, they own you. So I'm doing this so I can talk to my people, those who feel the same way I feel. You know? Um, and look, what do I do, man? I'm a freedom strategist. I like to call it a freedom strategist because that mindset is something that you have to unlock from. And right now, the idea of woke is running amok. It's almost like, you know, like you're having too much ice cream, yo. It's running amok, man. Yeah, I'm talking about so much so that one of our greatest creators, minds over this last couple of decades here is getting canceled, going through it, like getting embarrassed, trying to get embarrassed, trying to, as they say, buck break, you know, like these are the tools that are, these are the tools, man, that they use to stifle and scare. But the beauty about it, they don't realize that, um, that we're revolutionaries, man. Like we're full on revolutionary. So it's not about, I ain't gonna say nothing. The reason why I operate like this is because I'm not, <laughs> let me see, hold on here. The reason why I operate like this isn't necessarily because I don't wanna have money. It's because I wanna make as much organic inroads without having to depend on money to prove that the money, because remember this, if you depend on money, then you depend on them. If you depend on money, then you depend on them. Who is them? Them is the system, the system that has been put in place. And then the comfortable families and runners of these ivory tower places that benefit at the top of the system, they wanna keep all of these systems in place. They go through their playbooks, they call people crazy, they diagnose, they allow uh, random people and the media to um, just cut people down. Um, it's, it's a real sad state of affairs, real sad state of affairs. You know, it's not like you're doing a Matt Lauer out there raping women um, or sexually assaulting women because you're their boss. Nah, what you did was speak truth to power, like that is the uh, an actual truth to power. And we're sitting, we're running around, sitting around talking about, you know, white lives matter shirts. Guys, guys, look, how can we persist? How can we exist without evolving? Like, I mean, like, not evolving just in general, like mindset, but evolving out of that pain. That's the big thing. How can we keep that going on? Because when we're talking about pain, we're talking about thousands of years, man. Ever since Moses brought us across the Red Sea, we've always been the chosen. And that narrative has been co-opted over the years. And it runs the risk of being toppled. Because this is a little too Blatant, a little too obvious. There's lines being drawn in the sand. Kanye isn't a Kanye isn't a, 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 a 
He should not be canceled. Kanye is a treasure to us. He's ours. You can't cancel him. And we shouldn't cancel him. We can't cancel him. I mean, look, guys. If y'all never been anything or never had anything that you made by yourself and then mistakenly, through your own ignorance, giving it away, then you wouldn't understand. Especially when it's taking a man's IP. So what do I do? I take things like that and relate it to why blockchain and Web3 makes sense. What do I do? I talk about why Kanye needs to save and protect his intellectual property. What do I do? I highlight and show historically how this use of this use of disruption within the black community has cut down some of our greatest minds because it's so such a level of confusion, such a level of of well, I'm doing it this way and I'm getting ahead. Why should you? You know, that's the thing about you know when you're dealing with a lot of black folks is that there's a lot of black folks and not all everybody not everybody thinks the same. Just like there's a lot of Jews and not everybody thinks the same. But the ones that are in the media will have you think that they speak for all. And it doesn't really mean that. Like, I would love, yeah, it's, um, you know, if people open up their, their dealings with business, their dealings with how they actually see our culture, then we'll get it. But another thing is that they, from the way it looks, they're organized. And that's one thing that the black culture still doesn't have together, the organization. Why is that? Laziness or stress or don't care or what? You know your answer, but I, but I will tell you this, this next innovation, this next innovation of wealth, this next innovation of, of, of of real deal, of real deal um, financial ability to change the trajectory of your family, of your life, of everyone. That's what's right here teetering. So you just mean to tell me this. So, so what's going on right now? Like, look, Adidas even, and I keep jumping around, I'm sorry, but all of this pertains to IP when it comes to the creative Kanye West. All of this refers to IP. You create it, somebody else takes it, and then they make more of it. They make knockoffs of it. They say, I own everything you have. That's not something that a creator should feel any which way about other than terrible. Because somebody can come, offer you a bad contract just because you're hungry, and take everything that you have? No, 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 no. So what do I do? I advise. I, I'm the big homie. I'm the person that calls out that other person because he's trying to get over on the young buck. And I'm not letting that happen. I've seen it happen already. And kids willingly be like, here, I wanna be associated with you. And they come, they come to me like that. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. Yeah, that's not what I'm in it for, you know? Like, I want everyone to be able to fish. You know, I have, an ed I have a whole course. I have a whole education course for Web3 and NFT and blockchain, and that's something that you can subscribe to. You know, there's a link around here somewhere. And that's there for you. We can talk about that, but in this fraction and section here, we're gonna talk about how the blockchain applies in the real world to these real world situations. So that way you can have a better aspect of it. So now let's say this, Kanye made all of those Yeezys, all of those Red Octobers. Now let's say this, he sketched, made a sneaker, 
And then from here, he digitizes it. From this, he digitizes it, put it onto a secured blockchain, and then now he can go to whomever and be like, here's the designs, build that. And then when they do things with it, he has the copyright. That's what minting means. It's pretty much you're copywriting yourself, like your name, your likeness, an image. Shout out to all those young bucks who are getting money now. But be careful. Not all money is good money. Sometimes you rather struggle and keep your integrity and your pride than just jump for the money. So what do I do? I have learned to code. I won't say I'm a developer. I did learn to code. I did make Solidity contracts, mint tokens. Um, market projects. You know, me and the boys, we're part of about 40 different successful NFT launches, you know? So we know what we're doing. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of skills out there that we can use, tons of skills that we can use. And I tell you this, when it comes to um, your biggest skill, if you're hearing me, I'm sure it, it it's probably your way to see the world. That's really it, that unique way that you see the world. That's your biggest skill. Nobody else can re can produce that. Nobody else can replicate that. Now you just look and see what is going on in the world and how your skill can help. Then that's a whole different thing. You know, but the first, you know, when they say, what's your superpower? What do you like to do if nobody paid you? I like to talk. I like to train. I like to cook. I like to dance. I like to drink wine. I like to laugh. I like to fuck around in the damn Web3 in a blockchain. I love it. I love it. That's what I do. I build things the way I love. Yeah, man. So what do I do? I leave breadcrumbs. I come back and inspire. I build, I network. My network is phenomenal. However, I'm trying to talk to you. I'm trying to tap into you who don't believe that all of these things is true. Unless you see the struggle, unless you see the pain, this shit gotta hurt for you to think it's true. No, it doesn't, it doesn't really. It doesn't really. Yeah. It doesn't have to hurt, does it? There might be some pain though, leaving the body because you have to leave an old lifestyle. But outside of that, we good. We good over here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, what do I do? Man, I mint culture. I, I mint culture. Like we know these are Yeezys, so why is Adidas selling them, right? Maybe you should just have Yeezy and just put out a bunch of different styles. That may be interesting. At least he'd get to keep his, uh, keep his IP, but then check it. People can take your company, people can take your kids, people can take your freedom. So what do you really own? What do you really own? Look, y'all, if you're not paying attention, I implore you to. And if you need to get started, just sign up and I got you. Hello? Yeah, hello? Uh, hi, how are you? Bro, man, I'm, I'm good. What's up? Yeah, man. Whew. Let me take a nap.